I've been my commands a long time, the ball for protection of all time. Let's go, Jamie. Good at Listos, ready. Let's go. Had symptoms. Stamina became an issue. He's concerned about where he was, and that is a slip there. Well, that's a good thing, Chess, because if he would have fought, you know, moving forward in this fight. His temperature spiked to 101.5. He woke up in a stop, pool stop. of sweat. On Harry, if I'm in his corner right now, in Harry's corner right now, I'm worried because he doesn't need to be there. Because he's going to get timed. That's exactly what he needs to do. No, no, no. You don't allow the aggressiveness in the beginning of the show. And it's amazing, Tim, how that pressure's... Yeah, because now he has the distance, and now he, you know, he's giving the the aggressor a little. He's hesitating a little bit before he comes in. Nice uppercut right there. See what Bo Mack was saying, Tim, take that little step back when the pressure comes and land that uppercut, and he did it right there. His output in that second round, throwing 54 punches, landing 18 to a kendo's of yet another clash of heads. And there are the total punches. Uh, a lot. You know, you see him with the uppercut is available. The check hook is available. Keep doing what you're doing until he finds some answers. And right now, Jamel Herring does not have any answers to the inside game and the aggression of Jonathan Akendo. Oh, there's a great right left there, uppercut. Here we go. Over a minute to work here as Akendo only knows one way and delivered. A lightning strike here in round three. Stop, 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 stop. Bradley. Tim Bradley asked for that uppercut too, Tim. That's the shot you were calling for. They take it off. There's the uppercut again. It's takes that half step back. Uppercut perfectly because if he misjudges it and Okendo throws a looping right hand over the top. So now he's starting with the check hook now and then he's bringing up the uppercut. Short neck check hook. You know, one of the hardest weapons to land against a southpaw is the jab. So He's just leaving himself open to be countered. Bernardo, as you know, is a conversation that you were leading last night when we asked him the very first thing we asked him about the strategy, how to go about this fight against Herring card right from the very first bell. That's obvious. I like what I see from Herring right now. He's resisting the temptation. Put it right in. Let's get back to work. <laughs> it tests, you see the, the mind. What I, I said, I said that. A while back, he said he's not going to the well all too often now. Uppercut for some time and did surprise him with it later in the fight. And Akendo pays the price, is Jonathan Akendo. He has patiently waited for this opportunity, twice postponed with the positive COVID test. There you go. You see the blood coming from the right eye of Jamel Herring after that clash of heads. There have been numerous clash of heads. This was moments ago. No, no, stop, stop. No, 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 no. It was an intentional clash of heads. And he walked over to the commission and executive director. And every single time, that's how he gets his offense off. He's trying to get under the punches of Jamel Herring. He leads with his head just like he did right there. We did judge intent, but I think that was a good call from weeks to With the intentional head clash in round five. For a fighter with long arms, Jamel Herring can fight really well on the inside. The key is just knowing and mauled his way back in. And even if he's not winning rounds, he's wearing Jamel down. Right in, right in, right in. But the left hook is a punch that... The to be a three-division world champion. If Herring, that's a slip. If Herring, there have been numerous reports. 
belt here at 130 pounds, a cast from the UK on August 15th. Jamel, Jamel gave up some ground in that last round. Um, he, allowed, he allowed a kendo so, script going into this fight is to make things rough. He's no, he's not the, the you know, he's not as skillful as Jamel Herring. It messes up your rhythm as well. You know, it's really hard for Herring to really get in a really solid rhythm. About right. this at the beginning of the show, expecting you to not only win but look good and still come out here and perform. I asked Bomac, how do you deal with this guy coming in with his head? Mal's got to establish that jab because this guy's coming in, pop him with the uppercut. That's the only way because he doesn't stop coming straight forward. It's really bothering him. Anytime Jamel Herring asserts himself offensively, Herring is making this fight rough for himself. I don't know what it is, but this isn't the Jamel Herring that I'm used to seeing. He can't see. Uh oh. So Jamel saying he can't see. Now keep in mind, earlier we heard it was an intentional clash, an accidental clash, so we should be going to the scorecards here for a technical decision. Here's how it happened, when it happened. Declaring your winner by disqualification. And still, WBO Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Jamal Semperfai Harry.